Taiwan University. The article that I looked at was a control, randomized control trial on um, the effect of cycling with and without electrical stimulation on cardiorespiratory and vascular health in children with SCI. So the target population of this study was pediatric, so children between 5 and 13 years old with an SCI. They were 12 months post-op at least and had either a cervical or thoracic level spinal cord injury, either level A, B, or C, so they were either non-ambulatory non or ambulatory with braces. The parameters of this study, they used an RT300P FES cycle. For demonstration purposes, we're just going to use the cycle here. Um, the child would also be in a wheelchair instead of just sitting on the bike. For, they used a frequency of 33 hertz, a pulse duration of either 150, 200, 250, or 300 microseconds, and the amplitude was set to generate a sufficient force to maintain the set cadence of the bike um, with a max of 140 milliamps. So there was three different groups. Each group did this for one hour, three times a week for six months. The first group and the one we're going to demonstrate is the functional electrical stimulation group. Their target cadence on the bike was 50 RPMs. They activated all three muscle groups, so it's the quads, the hamstrings, and the glutes with the appropriate size electrode. They started the resistance at one nanometer and increased it by 0.14 nanometers once the child could go the whole session at the set, cad at the set cadence and resistance. On the bike, they did 10 minutes passively, 40 minutes with the electrical stimulation, and then 10 minutes passively for cool down. So they did, once they were at 30 seconds below 35 RPMs, they weren't able to maintain that 50 RPMs. Um, it was considered the cool down, and they did the cool down due to fatigue. So you can see here, we have, for demonstra demonstration purposes, two electrodes on the quads, we have two electrodes on the hamstrings, our machine that we're using here only has two channels. If you have the capability of uh, having another channel, that would be great so you can put an electrode on the uh, glute muscles as well. And so the child, would, once this was starting and the contraction was going, they would go ahead and cycle. And it would be on both legs as well. And they would cycle, keeping it at 50 RPMs for that 40 minutes after a 10 minute passive warm up. Two other groups, they had a passive group, so they would just be on the bike, and they would be on the bike for a total of an hour. And they did um, just an hour passively um, going on the bike. There was a third group, they did electrical stimulation just on the table. They did a portable two channel surface stimulation unit, and they were doing the stimulation bilaterally. They got strong contractions of the quad, hamstring, and glutes. And for that hour, they split it up into 20 minute increments, doing 20 minutes on each uh, muscle group. They did a 15 second on, 15 second off duty cycle, and they were in the supine position. All three groups also continued any previous therapy they were doing, but they were asked not to add anything that was going to skew the effects of the study. So for the outcomes, the FES group, um, for the O2 uptake and resting heart rate, there was no differences between any of the groups over time, but there were significant changes in the percent change um, in the FES group and the passive group. The resting heart rate, there was no changes in that. For uh, force vital capacity, there were no changes between the groups or over time. And then also they looked at lipids, and there was no changes from baseline versus six months between the groups but there was a significant difference between the groups for cholesterol and HDA, or HDL levels looking at average change. The electrical stimulation groups, so the ones that were just lying supine on the table, they decreased their cholesterol compared to the FES group. So overall, I think this is a beneficial thing, or a beneficial treatment for the uh, clinic if you have the time to incorporate it. Um, however, a lot of the time, I know we don't have the time to incorporate necessarily an hour treatment of functional electrical stimulation. So if you're able to send the child home with some sort of functional or electrical stimulation, that might be worth it to look into. Or um, finding treatments that are able to help augment the results of it. Um, maybe doing it, not every treatment session that you have, but including it when you think it's going to be appropriate. So thank you. And